Hi, can you hear me? No? Closer? Okay. Hi, I'm Dmitry. I'm, I'm the founder of NodeTime. Uh, NodeTime is a performance profiler and monitor for Node.js. Uh, be, before actually diving into, into the project and showing you demos and how it works, uh, uh, I'd, I'd like to give you some context of why would somebody need something like this. Uh, and basically, uh, the, the idea is, uh, is that performance uh, is performance problems and performance optimizations are, are uh, very different from all other problems we are uh, we having when we are developing. Uh, actually, if you look at the development process, it's an iterative process where we always kind of fix the problems, fix the mistakes, fix bugs, uh, until the end we have a, a working product in the live environment. So let me just... Oh, okay, sorry. So, so we... Uh, so basically, let's look at these types of problems to understand why performance problems are, are so different. Uh, syntax errors, <laughs> you, you type something, uh, compiler tells you, uh, or runtime tells you, you have a problem at this line. You go and fix this line. So the, it's pretty fast. Uh, everything is there for you. Logic errors, you, you made a logic like a fl in, in a flow of your program or in an iteration or, or whatever, uh, normally you see these logical problems uh, in the output of your application. Uh, or it's a, if it's in a UI, you see it in the UI. And normally you can point out where from the code, uh, where in the code the problem is. And you go back and fix this problem. Uh, <clears throat> so what about performance problem? Well, th this is a different class of problem. Uh, why? Because uh, it's not, it's not the uh, exact logical consequence that brings you to the problem, but it's an impact of your application's logic on, uh, on the environment, on the resources you have. Uh, and th there, are, uh, you you can you can detect performance problems by doing load testing, uh, different the, the different types of load testing in development environment also. Uh, try to do it in production environment, but the problem is that uh, it's, it all depends on the state of the application at at, the, at certain moment. So uh, that's why its development environment is not really the pr production environment when it comes to performance problems, and uh, uh, it's that's why it's really hard to reproduce uh, to reproduce the real situation in the development environment. Because every, at every moment of time, the system has state. And that state makes things slow or, or not. So, so that what, that's what defines if things are slow or not. Uh, and the thing about performance problems is that while, while the other, other errors uh, are very easy to identify, and it's actually uh, told by, by the compilers or runtimes, uh, or, or even users seeing the pro seeing the problems. Performance problems are uh, are not so easy. A and ironically, everything that we do today needs to have a performance and a, and a scale uh, because it's on the web. And normally, everybody targets many users, or, or at least aims to. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I've talked about the, the the nature of performance problems, but. Uh, as I said, th th there are different reasons for them, but ma it, it, they mainly depend on the complexity, uh, of the complexity of uh, time and space complexity of your algorithms of, uh, within your application, but it's not limited to your application itself. Uh, if you think of the databases you use, actually the databases have this algorithms, uh, algorithm inside as well. So. You have to be able to understand understand what they are doing to to be able to uh, make sure these problems uh, to, to fix to solve these problems. Uh, yeah, well, there are, there are a lot of uh, reasons why this happened. Uh, poor poor algorithm poor algorithm design uh, is one of them. It's uh, is mainly because when we plan when we design something. When we design something, uh, we not always think what exactly, what situation exactly the life environment will be. Uh, and that's why uh, 
That's why it's pretty f hard to write a, a very good algorithm for a certain situation. What we do, we try to optimize, we, we try to reduce the complexity as, as much as possible. So, so uh, I'm sure everybody knows that nobody does, uh, everybody tries to avoid exponential uh, and even linear, and linear algorithms in your application whenever possible. That's why we do indexing, that's why uh, there are many other ways uh, to fix them. The hardware problems, uh, the bandwidth problems, so everything that resource related can also cause the problem, uh, cause the performance problem. So, so how do we solve performance problems? Uh, we've seen that the other types of problems are really, uh, we don't think too much to, to get to the root cause, but with performance problem, it's pretty hard because uh, the, the, only, the only feedback we get sometimes, I'm talking about the worst cases, is that the thing is slow or the thing is crushing uh, or, or this kind of information. So it doesn't tell you, hey, this is crushing because uh, it, you did something like this or you're running a job every uh, 12 hours which, crush, which slows down the database or, or whatever. Uh, so, so what we do, we collect all the information and we feed our brains with that information and we start to think, start to use different types of reasoning <coughs> to come to a to understand the root cause. A and sometimes, uh, well, th that's pretty challenging, the, the thinking part, but sometimes uh, you don't know if you can ident you c if you can come to the root cause because uh, it might be that there is not enough facts, not, not enough information to, to understand that. Uh, <coughs> yeah, so, so, so what, what is, what is no, what is not time actually? Uh, not time tries to solve exactly that problem. It tries to combine all possible tools necessary for for uh, for getting these facts, uh, so that you can have enough information to quickly understand where the performance problem was, uh, and quickly solve it. And what's more important, uh, not time tries to do it also on production because, as, as you know. It's kind of hard to, to get, when you're not prepared for that, it's kind of hard to, to debug the production environment. You, you sometimes, I think many did that, you just stop it, you put some logging in there and you start it again and then you, you continue that process, uh, you narrow down uh, the, the code, code parts where, where the problem might be. Uh, yeah, so. Let me go directly to the demo so that you see what I'm talking about, actually. <coughs> okay, I have a simple application. Do you see it? Or should I make it bigger? Okay. So there's nothing special, just a simple, simple server where. Uh, Can you move the mic a bit? Uh, sorry, that that mic. Sorry, to follow that. Uh, very simple application. Does a re calls, does a Redis command, and then uh, uh, inserts a row into MongoDB, and then gets the count of the rows from Mongo MongoDB and. Plus, it does a few more things. Uh, I'll talk about it later. So, so basically, that, that's very simple, very trivial. But uh, so le let's let's start it to see what what happens. Okay. So, so no time is added. I'm not going to talk how to install it because it's so easy that you can get it immediately if you look at the website. Okay, so it's running here on a 301. Yeah, I've done a request and what I see, oh, it's pretty small, but anyway. Is it Okay. So, so what do you see are the samples of the HTTP requests I've just made. And uh, you also see the operations that, uh, that, that I showed you that were made in the scope of this request. Uh, these, op these operations can also be found within the request itself. 
that there are a lot of information. So based oh, that's okay. Anyway, uh, so basically you see your request and you see the operation inside inside the request. That's something like. Seconds and then, like Mongo call one millisecond, and yeah, with the Redis. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, what is that? Okay, yeah, yeah, Redis call uh, like 500 microseconds, uh, and you have some other information there. Uh, but but th this thing, th this is very important because uh, imagine doing this on the live server when, when you're experiencing a problem. Uh, that would be pretty uh, pretty helpful in trying to find something, and uh, there is there is a way to also to filter those samples because if if your server is under the load, you might get a lot of these uh, samples and requests. Well, a lot means uh, amount that you can still see, like it will it will give you the slowest ones. But for example, there there's tricks you can do. I could. If I want to debug something on a live server, for example, I could use a filter and I could uh, take my cookie and put it there in the filter and, s and basically get all those requests which I am, I am uh, initiating. So that, so, so that I don't, for example, if you do logging, that's pretty hard to do because you have to uh, also have some conditions when the user is this, uh, print out this, so that otherwise you will have like a tons of information. Which is you, which you still can analyze, but if you really have a problem on a have a problem on a live website, it, it will be pretty hard to do. Okay, so, so so there's filtering. There are many fields you can filter on, or you can just put anything there. And the filtering happens on the server, so 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 nothing gets lost. And if you think if you want to see the sample of a specific URL with a specific parameters, you still can do it. Uh, okay, let, let's go to some other stuff. Uh, CPU profiler. This is basically, uh, this is nothing new. This uses V8's uh, CPU profiler. But the di difference is that you can start it uh, on the live system remotely. So you don't, ha don't need anything else except the node time package. Uh, well, let, let, let's, let's try it out. Let's start it for five seconds. It, it will just, uh, and, and just do a few requests. Okay, I've got the profile back. Uh, the, the two views, one is just the, the call tree which V8 gives and, and another is a simple try of, of analysis. And you see here, it's uh, the, the function slow. Yeah, it's not really nice, but it's, because it's small. But, but it tells you wh where the, at least it tells you where the function is. So, so this is uh, the, the V8's original function, but we can go to the code and uh, mm -hmm. oh. yeah, I have it. I have it open. We can go to the code and see that uh, it's just a simple. Uh, it's for testing. Just a function that that is slow. A and basically, it could. Al it, it was also possible to see the, this. To see this CPU in the CPU time, where you, you see that the request took so much, and actually the CPU time was also so much, that means there is something taking the CPU, uh, there is something on CPU, and not really just a call somewhere which is waiting. Uh, okay, there, let's, let me show you also the memory profile. This is also using uh, V8's uh, snap, hip snapshots, V8's hip profiler. Uh, just take a heap snapshot, and yeah, it's here. I again created a, a, a code which is like a leak, small leaking code, just to, for the demo. Uh, and what you see here is is a bit different from what, for example, Firefox or, or the other tools show you. Uh, it tries to show you 
the memory from the point of view of retainers. So, so basically what variables are there. It's hard to do because you can only see the retainers in a hip. Uh, but, but still, it, it, it helps. For example, in this case, you see that like 14% is some property, example leak. Let's see what the property is. Yeah. What is, what the fuck? Five. Yeah, you see that, that the five. So this is basically a, a, a property that has a, a lot of data in it. Uh, and you can go and see what's like the largest instant instances, w w if it's a string, it will show you the strings. Okay, I want to do one more thing, just to demonstrate how, how, perf how performance problems appear and, and how, how invisible they are, actually. So let's do that. I will run a, where is that? Okay. I run a s small script which will fill uh, like a few thousand ent keys into Redis, and we'll we'll run it again, mm -hmm. just to run a couple of times. Okay, and you see that the time has grown, and and why? If we go and look at the. Let's see. We see that Redis, this operation, the interstore, is not taking more time. It, 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 like 20, 200 milliseconds for Redis is kind of uh, too much. But, but that's explainable, because if we go to a nice Redis documentation, and we go to the interstore, so, so he, he, here is it. This is the complexity of the operation, and you see that as, as the as the uh, as the number of keys grow, number of key values, you also uh, get the complex. You get the that's yeah, that's a little linear. You get the complexity also uh, appropriately uh, growing. Okay. Let me just, okay, just want to show you a few more thing, things, but uh, I'll go, let's see if there is an intro. Yeah, cool, there is. Uh, it, it also has some metrics because uh, not, it's not really the metrics which, which you need for, for long, ti long time monitoring. You can still use it, but, but the main idea of this metrics is to follow it, it, it serves you uh, as an additional information of how the systems are behaving because you can see the trends if something like the, the Redis operations are, are getting, uh, are becoming slower or, or whatever. The, the real time metrics, and they're also, for example, we can look at uh, last, uh, or whatever, like RISP, HTTP, or, or, or Redis response time average, whatever like four milliseconds. There's a nice thing, uh, response time histogram. This is not really a histogram, but it's like a histogram in time. So it shows, it splits uh, into the bins, the number of requests that fall into a certain response time range. Uh, so you see there were like 1,500 requests in the range of one millisecond, and there are less in the range of 10. So this basically, uh, it doesn't tell you exactly what happens, but at least it tells you what uh, what category of requests uh, are falling into. Because you might s suddenly get some requests uh, in a higher category and less of them I in the in the fastest. So, so it basically gives you more information than the averages, because averages are not very uh, not very helpful in some cases. For example, when you have uh, like long long polling requests, they, they will like, mess up the averages. You know. uh, there, there are some alerting, you can set alerting on the metrics. Uh, uh, it's Right now it's only emailing, but it's o o it also can do, it's not there yet, it also can call the URLs. That makes, uh, for example, a little bit of automation possible, so you can have alerts, for example, if something grows, and then you, you start a new machine. So, well, well, it's not that easy, of course, but just 
just to give you an idea what, what can be done with it. Uh, okay, I think I showed you everything. Yeah, yeah, I think I showed you everything. Th there are, as I said, the no time is, is not a, a something, uh, it's not just one or two features, it's basically a set of tools that allow you to, f to solve performance problems problems and a set of tools means there will be everything possible because you need every, everything that's there to fix performance problem it's not possible to to just uh, have just one type of information uh, there might you, you must be able to look at the logging do load testing and all of that and that's what uh, no time is aiming to do so thank you that's it <laughs>